Greetings. This is the drawing that makes up the backdrop to my song, Jesus and the Woman Caught in Adultery. I thought I'd take this opportunity to point out some details of this drawing and some of the nuances. I have eight drawings that have Jesus written diagonally. The green represents his earthly ministry when he was with us going about doing good. Now, I pointed out in my commentary on this song some things I'm going to repeat here. And one were these hands. The scribes and the Pharisees were pointing at the woman caught in adultery, but their target was Jesus himself. This happened in the temple where Jesus had again come to teach the people. And they brought this woman caught in adultery and threw her in the midst. The primary thing they were testing him on and trying to get Jesus on was that under the law of Moses, anyone caught in adultery was to be stoned to death. So if Jesus refused to do that, then he would be found as a false prophet. If on the other hand, he did agree with them, she was probably well known among the people that were attracted to Jesus because one of the charges against him was he was a friend of publicans and sinners or tax gatherers and sinners. So when Jesus stooped down these individuals were told they persisted in asking him, and that's an intensive in the Greek, which means they were just aggressively attacking at that point because they thought they had him. Now you probably can't see it, but I believe he wrote something on the ground that had the power of humiliating these individuals in an astounding way. Have you ever tried to reason with somebody that is extremely and intensely angry? You just can't get through. Well, when Jesus stood up after his first time of stooping down and writing on the ground, he said, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. I don't believe those words alone had the power to humiliate these individuals, especially in front of a group of people that they despised, these unclean people that were coming to Jesus. He totally humiliated them in front of that audience in the temple, which was their own turf. Well, what I have written here, which I don't, I know you can't see, but I have the, the first part of didaskalos, which is the word teacher. And if it would have been plural, like teachers, I think he might have written something like teachers of the law. You guys are teachers of the law. Where's George? Both parties were to be executed, not just one. This was tremendous hypocrisy. Whatever Jesus wrote on the ground had the power that they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones. Well, he stooped down a second time and wrote something, and, and in the commentary that I have, I, I make the case that it may have been the Roman decree that they didn't have execution power, or he could have even written, obviously he could have written the name of the individual she was committing adultery with, which, oh, I mean, you talk about impact on that. But he may have also written on the ground either some of their illicit affairs, whether present or in the past, or maybe some among their number that were involved in illicit affairs and maybe started writing some of their names on the ground. But whatever he wrote, they all turned tail and were completely humiliated and left the scene. I had a pastor from one church that wrote me and asked me if he could use the photo that I had on my website. Somehow he transposed it onto the bulletin for their Sunday service. And I told him, sure, you know, I'd be honored by that. And one thing he said, for being in this kind of situation, she seems awfully calm. So I thought I'd just let you look at her face. I think there's a little stress on there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so. And when Jesus stood up, he said, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? And she said, No one, Lord. And he said, Well, neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, or literally, from the now, sin no more. One thing I love about that is from the now. When we come to him and we confess and do what we can to acknowledge our sin, then from the now we get up and we move forward. Those sins are removed from us as far as the east is from the west and they're cast into the bottom of the sea. He says his mercies are new every morning. 
So when we come and confess, we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. And he says, from the now, sin no more. We get up and we start moving forward again with a renewed spirit, renewed commitment to righteousness. Well, the thing that's important to note about this entire episode is under the law, you could not condemn anyone unless you had two witnesses. When Jesus stood up, all the witnesses had left. And even if Jesus had said, I know that you did that, which I'm sure he did know, because it would be one witness, there is not grounds to, under the law, to where she could be condemned. And besides that, the Romans had taken away execution power anyway. I would encourage you to listen to my commentary because I go into more detail of the dynamics of what was going on in the temple and Jesus even being in it and taking that place over the way he did. It's just a tremendous passage and this is a tremendous account. I have a little poem to go with this and we'll close. This woman was caught in adultery, a charge that was true, more than likely. But I'll see her in heaven, and probably real soon, because his blood saved us both from our doom. Well, thank you for listening. Like I always say, listen, learn, and live.